Let's, uh, let's see how close our... I'm not feeling too bad about this extrapolation because 2013 is not that far past 2011. I think I can just Google population of the U.S. and it will give it to me. That's what it's calling. Oh, 2012 it's calling, but go ahead and do 2013 anyway. It's cute. It's comparing it to Russia and the U.K. Why Russia and the U.K.? Holy crap, the UK has 63 million people in it? That's a tiny island. Think about the UK. Think about Britain. Right, dude. It's very small. <laughs> it's got roughly one fifth of the population of America. They replace the size of. How big is the UK? <laughs> I know it's small. How big is state? Texas? It's, big, it's smaller than Texas, isn't it? Yeah. No. No? It's not smaller than Texas? Yes, I would think it would be too. Everything's smaller. Texas. Alaska. Yeah. Everything's smaller in Texas. I'm not Alaskan. Alaska is staggering. When you see Alaska to scale against the United States, I'd say the United Kingdom would probably be the size of Oregon and Washington. Mm -hmm. I would think too. We could Google that as well. What do you guys get as far as the number goes? Two. Two thirty-three. Ooh, interesting. A very large underestimate. A very large underestimate. That's interesting. That's interesting. That tells me that maybe we should refine our rate of growth. Maybe it's not 1.01. Maybe it's more like 1.011 or 1.012. Maybe. Maybe. I, I, I don't say we should fix statistics, but maybe, maybe our rate, that 1%, is 2-ish. Maybe we should get it down to 1.2% or 1.3%. Don't have to worry about it right now. Conversationally, 1% growth is fine, but it's just that our estimate is coming in too low because of that. Or we can recenter our graph, not back from 1900, we can start it up more like 1950 or 1960. That might be the way to go too. Set it at a, at a, at a closer, at a closer uh, data point than 1900. But yeah, we're getting it up. I, I, saw, I thought I saw a hand going up. So, Katie, do you have a question? You sure? I'm just going to air domain again. But I tried to, did I, can I plug it in? Did you put in, I um, guess, 76 times 1.01 1. 1 to the 113 power? No. Well, that's what, see, you got to go years, years since 1900. 2013 is 113 uh, okay. years past, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 113. Yeah. So 113 up here times that times that. Okay. Or one, excuse me, that to the 113 times 76. So I wonder if we'd get, hey, let's try something else, friends. Let's, let's try adjusting the model. Let's adjust the model. Let's not go back to 1900. Let's go back to our Excel database. Let's start the model at, where does it start stabilizing? Right around the 50s? 60s. Let's start at 63. Let's start at 63 with 189 million. Let's do this, let's do this. Model number two. Let's go, call this 4A, I guess. Let's do Y equals 189 million times 1.01 to the x. Y is still the population in millions, but now x is going to be years since 1963. Because that's when the 1% actually started stabilizing. So this, this cuts out the World War I, the World War II, all those goofy fluctuations of adding in Alaska and Hawaii and things like that. So that actually makes it nice too. Then you plug in 50, don't you? Because 2013 is exactly 50 past. That makes the math easier, too, at least for what you have to enter. 51? For 2014, right? Good. What do you got? Amber, go ahead. I wonder how all the deaths in Vietnam didn't make a difference. There wasn't that many deaths yeah, that's, in I mean, I'm not trying to trivialize death or life or anything like that, but when you look at when you have 189 million people, and then we look at, let's just, real quick, let's see. So it's like 55,000. Right, exactly. So you say deaths in the Vietnam War. Uh, Vietnam War casualties. Let's see what Wikipedia says. Uh, number of deaths. 3.8 million, but that's not, that's all, not just American soldiers. So uh, let's do, let's do American deaths. Vietnam War. Uh, oh, sorry. Caused by United States military casualties of war. Here we go. Vietnam. Where's Vietnam? Where's Vietnam? 
Oh, he, oh these are engine. Uh, these are engine. Uh, here we go. Is this total deaths right here? Combat, other, total. Here we go. This column right here. Uh, where's Vietnam again? My God, we've been this many wars? Yeah. <laughs> Vietnam, 58,000. So when you compare 58,000 to 189 million, it really doesn't make, it, it's, you're talking about tenths of a percent. So it, it, it's got a larger impact long term because you've taken those guys out of the gene pool. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying not to sound totally cost, like, you know, but you're, you're, yeah. you're creating a ripple factor, but in and of itself, that's not a huge chunk. And the numbers of births even it out. It, it, it kind of, yes. And, and the, the booming More idea. More babies. Right, the booming idea. <laughs> what I'd like to see is the U.S. statistics around the Civil War. That would be interesting to me, because obviously that was all U.S. casualties. And that would be interesting to see how that dipped. The, I, don't, I don't have census data from back that far, though. Yeah. That would be interesting for me. Chelsea? Even World War II had more deaths than Vietnam. World War II had more deaths in yeah. Vietnam, which... So did Korea. Korea did too. Does that, I guess that makes sense. Larger battlefields, I guess. I, I, I don't understand the, the, the logic behind why one would have more than the other. I think the Civil War was up to the... Well, maybe not. It depends on how many guys were in the country at that time. They'd have 50,000 50, people dying one day. Right, but then that's a huge chunk of the population, too. Yeah. See, the thing is, if 50,000 died in Vietnam, 50,000 died in the Civil War, that's 50,000 total dead in each conflict, but it's a hell of a lot bigger hit in the Civil War when there were only, say, 50 million people in the country versus 150 million people in the country. You know, you've got a three times bigger effect on the percentage. So that's what I'm, I guess I'm kind of getting at, Amber, is that idea. Is that fair? Yeah. Good, 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 good. Hey, the Vietnam War didn't, didn't last 20 years. Well, I mean, we depends on what you define the war as. Okay, yeah, they're, we they're, there. They're talking the conflict. They're telling the entire thing. They're not talking. We, we're right. thinking without the French part. That's what you're thinking? Yeah. They're thinking with the, the, them. The beginning getting, getting to the end. The formal definition. And it, again, it, I've heard yeah. conflicting estimates as to what actually constituted that. Why it should be called a police action on a war and all those things. So It's funny, the more I talk about that in this class, the fewer and fewer people have even heard of it. Because I think... Like Iraq and Afghanistan have become our new Vietnam, as far as like as far as time, which well, is interesting. If you really want to flip your noodle on that one, no, not really. Um, <laughs> no, it like, all the hell out of me. Actually, there's actually to every it's it's not there quite yet. It's at like fourteen to one, but um, for every um, death we have due to combat. There's almost 50 people. Oh, no, 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 no. See, that, that's, that, that, yeah. that scares the piss out of me. You know, I just, yeah. I mean, of course, it's not here. It doesn't do anything. It still exists. Suicide is, kills more service right. than than war. Yeah. And that, that is a lot. relatively recent phenomenon, I think. And that's yeah, it's, it's throwing everything off. <laughs> Sorry. That just freaks me out. How would, how did our estimate come out? <laughs> Do we get any closer? Yes. 313. 313. There we go. So if we take out the kind of goofy non-behavioral part of the First World War and Second World War and only go from the 60s forward, we get the 313, which is arguably what the, the Census Bureau says it should be, which makes perfect sense. It's behavioring at that 1% rate. So I say if you need to figure out what the estimate of the U.S. is, population is, use, use the trend that's actually behaving well. If you try to smooth it over too much, over 100 years of data, you might have too many hiccups that have to be smoothed out with the regressions. And all this is great. All of this is great. I want to compare that one to these. This guy over here was exponential growth. The growth of the U.S. was growing at 1% per year. Over here, these guys were all called exponential decay. Exponential decay. Now, if you think about each of those models, I don't want you to write this down necessarily. But you can view all of these. The one that's in this model, the 1.01, the one represents the fact that you don't lose what you had before, but you add to it with the percentage to the right. So the 1.01, you're picking up 1%, over and above the 100%. What I'd like to do with this one, just to drive, really drive the point home, I'm going to write this one as 22 times 1 minus 0.89. <laughs> Is it 1 minus 0 0.89? No, 79. There we go. 1 minus 0 0.79 equals 0.21, yes? The reason I like writing it this way is the 1 stands for the 100%, and you are losing 79% with each successive trial. 
Thereby, what you see up here is what you're leaving behind. You're leaving behind 21%. Does that, does that make sense? Just because you don't see it mathematically with the equation that the TI kicks back, that doesn't mean that the one isn't there. It's just the 100% is losing 79%, leaving behind 21% with each, each successive trial. That should hopefully make sense. Because if you stop pulling, if you pull an ace, a spade, or a diamond, you should be losing 75% of people with each trial. So we should be losing 79 off the 100, leaving behind roughly 25. Stretching that out to the other, the other card experiments. OK, this guy right here in the middle. This one here, they did 21.7 to the x, writing it a different way. 1 minus 0.3 to the x. The 100% each trial is losing about 30% on each trial. We're losing the hearts leaving behind the 70% that are hearts. Again, it's not perfect. We should be losing 25% and leaving behind 75%. But nonetheless, the one is still there. The one is still there, if that's fair. And last but not least, the clearest one, I think, is the coin flip. That is honestly the clearest, the clearest of the whole shebang <laughs> over here. This is roughly a half. This is roughly a half. So you end up with 21 times 1 minus 0.47. You're losing 47%, thereby maintaining 53%. So in all of these exponential models, you're either gaining or losing. The decay models, in the decay models, these bases are less than one. That means you're leaving behind less than you go in with. You're losing. With the growth model, the 1.01, you're picking up with each iteration. You're picking up. Now the one data point I want to leave left, I'm going to assign you guys all a number. Turn this off because you don't need to hear this on the video. 